Good morning. My name is Dr. Prashant Arun, consultant physician and diabetologist at MB Hospital for Diabetes. Today, we are going to see about the coronavirus, COVID-19. But when I say corona, now don't think that I'm going to go into the fever, cough and symptoms, etc. Because by now, everybody will be knowing about all that. So today, we're going to learn something a little different. It's called herd immunity. After that, we'll be seeing about some vaccines and then which vaccine is in which phase. And then we'll be seeing mainly about children and coronavirus and about breastfeeding and coronavirus. This is not going to be a very technical or a medical talk. This talk is mainly done for a general awareness of people. So when we take herd immunity, before we go into that, we'll have to know how can we develop immunity. There are two main reasons. One will be through vaccination. And the other one, by developing the disease, the body develops the antibody for the disease. So this is a two way that a person can get immune to a disease. So as of now, we don't have a vaccine. So what is going to help us? That is where the herd immunity comes into the role. So what is herd immunity? In a community, if around 65 to 70 percent of the population are affected by a disease and they develop antibody to the disease, this 65 to 70 percent of the population can protect the remaining 30% of the population. So how are they going to do that? When you see, this is just a small example. If you see at the top, you can see there are three different colors. One is the red, one is green, and the other one is black. Now, for example, if that red color people are infected with COVID-19 currently at present, and the green color that is surrounding the red color people are people who have already developed the disease and already developed antibodies to the disease and the black are immunocompromised individuals or people who have already not got the disease so when i say immunocompromised it is people who when even if the vaccine comes they cannot be taking could be due to many reasons as they are taking drugs for cancer or if they do on dialysis or stuff like that so, how can they save when you look into that? These green people have already got the disease and have developed antibodies. So, the spread from the red to the black is going to be stopped because of the people surrounding them. So, in a community, if there are more people who have developed immune to the disease, then this is known as herd immunity. So, where this herd immunity plays a vital role is for people who cannot take the vaccines, people who are immunocompromised, who are on other treatments, all that. So this is where the herd immunity is very important. And one main thing before I tell you about this herd immunity is people should not hide their symptoms because most of them are now afraid to just go to the hospital and check for COVID-19. But when you check early, the mortality rate is much better because when you get treated earlier, you level up less complications. First, initially, maybe if you are having a small headache or cough, there is no reason for you to hide such symptoms. You can openly go to a doctor or any hospital and you can get yourself tested for COVID-19. Because here we are seeing many patients come to us in the later stages with breathlessness and drop in saturation and in the cytokine storm phase when they come. It is really difficult because as soon as we receive them, it's as if we are going to put them onto the ventilator. But this can be avoided if people come earlier with symptoms and if we give them appropriate treatment, so much could be avoided and so much of problems could be stopped. Another reason why we expect patients to come in earlier during the symptoms are during the acute phase of symptoms or in the incubation period, they tend to spread the virus more. So what happens is more people in the community get affected. Could be your relatives, your neighbors, your children, anybody or the elders at your house. So when you have the slightest of the symptoms, when you come to the hospital, it is you're doing a good to your society, you're doing good to yourself and you're doing good to people around you. So this is one way we can come in control of the COVID-19. 
Next, we should move on to vaccines. But before we move on to the vaccines, let us see which vaccine is in which phase. Because now we're seeing in the papers that this company, this vaccine is in phase three. It is going to come out. Recently, we even said that August 15th vaccines are going to come out. So now let's see which vaccine is in which phase. But before we move on to that, let us see what does each phase mean? Because then it becomes really easy for each and every individual to know what they are saying in the media daily. So let's move on to the next video. So now, before we go into vaccines, we are going to see about the phases. Many of you would have heard phase 1, this vaccine is in phase 3, it's going to come out soon. So what are these phases? They are you know, stages in a clinical trial. So before a drug or a vaccine can come into the market to the general population, it undergoes clinical trial. So in that clinical trial, there are different phases. So that's what we're going to see now. So what do this clinical trial mean? It is mainly to check the effect, safety, dose, everything of a drug before it comes to a market. So this clinical trial has a preclinical phase and a clinical phase. The preclinical phase is where the drug that we are going to get to the market is tested on animals first to see whether it will be safe to be given to humans. So after the preclinical phase, then it goes to approval and then it enters the phase zero, which is the first phase of human trial, phase zero. This phase zero can take place in a very short duration with a small amount of population that is within 10 to 15 people and the actual dose that is given in phase zero will be one percent of the actual dose maybe if it's hundred percent then it's only one in hundred that is given in this phase zero to just see how the human body reacts to the drug this is the phase zero then we go to phase one phase one is done in a little more larger population with around 25 to 100 people and in this phase one we decide how much dose can be given maximum tolerated dose and we see which area we can give the drug to like which route the drug can be given in like whether it could be given through your nose or whether it should be taken as a tablet or it should be taken as an injection all this is decided in phase one so in an average, the phase one can go up to six months to one year. But at times of pandemic and emergencies like these, the clinical trial can speed up. So from phase one, it goes to phase two. Phase two is done in people from 100 to 300 people is phase two. And in this phase two, usually it takes six months to several years. But in this, what is checked is the safety of the drug the effect of the drug and how it reacts in different population like in children, in elders, in women, in men. So all that is checked in phase two. Next we move on to the phase three, which is the final stage of the pre-marketing phase before it enters the market. That is phase three. So this phase three is done in a little more larger population, maybe less than 3000 people. And here they confirm whether the drug has any side effects whether how effective the drug is, all that is checked here in phase three. So in general, this phase three takes up to five years. But again, as I said, in pandemics, this everything is speeded up. So after phase three, the drug or the vaccine goes to approval from the FDA, NDA, and then enters the marketing phase. So as of now that we saw the phase zero, phase one, two, and three, a pre-marketing phase, the drug does not enter the market. But phase four, the drug is inside the market. So next, do all the drugs that enter this clinical trial enter the market? No. Only around 25 to 30% of the drugs that enter clinical trial come into the market. Because most of them get rejected due to some safety issues or some efficacy issues. They stop. So this 25 to 30% that enters the market in phase four, they are generally circulated. And then we find out if there are any rare side effects, like people take some other medicines for a few other diseases. So when combined with them, do they have any other side effects or 
do they have any other causes in elderly or children so all that is seen and if seen to be producing any problem then the drug is recalled so this is what is the phases so generally this clinical trial itself takes a very long time but during this pandemic everything is speeded up and but definitely when a drug is coming out it is surely checked for its safety its effect how much dose can be given and everything and then it enters the market so this is in short about clinical trial and the phases now next we're going to look into which vaccine by which country is in which phase i will not be going into all the countries and all the vaccines but i will be in short telling you which country has which vaccines and they are in which phase and maybe when we can expect them so now that we have seen about phases it will be easier when someone tells you that this vaccine is in this phase and it's going to come out you will know when we can expect and what to expect so now let's see how many vaccines are there in trial there are around 42 vaccines that are in clinical trial now maybe in pre clinical stages there are many vaccines but in the clinical stages there are 42 vaccines at present so now let's see which vaccine is in which phase in phase 3 we've got few vaccines i'll just name few of them there is corona vac by china there is ad5 by wuhan china there is this moderna by america then in phase 2 to 3 there is the oxford vaccine that recently came up in the news and everyone were eagerly waiting for this this oxford vaccine by astrazeneca is shown good results from phase 2 to phase 3 next all of us know the covaxin by india the bharat biotech that vaccine has finished phase 1 part 1 so that is what we have been reading all about then there are few vaccines in pre clinical stages i'll just name few of them maybe the recombinant corona virus vaccine the johnson and johnson vaccine all that are in the pre clinical stage now that we have so many vaccines in the clinical and pre clinical stages will all of them come into the market like i said earlier after their safety and effects have checked in this around 25 to 30% will come to our market so we'll have to wait till the drugs have been tested for their safety and efficacy and then enter our market so as of this now we have known about vaccines and the phases with this talk i would like to just add few points on corona and children how they react with covid-19 and many questions i get frequently is if the mother is covid positive can she feed the baby breast milk can she feed breast milk to the baby so that we are going to see next so i'll keep this really crisp and short can children develop covid-19 or corona and what if they develop corona so generally children if they develop covid-19 they are very mild to moderate they don't usually go into the severe category unless and until they are immunocompromised but otherwise generally in children it is a very mild disease they even it's just generally diarrhea or fever or cough and it just goes away like that so generally for children we really don't need to be worried about and why this is mainly because children have the thymus gland usually it disappears at around 6 to 7 years so till then the thymus gland is where the t cells have been produced so the immunity in children is really good that they develop only very mild symptoms so the next question is can a breast milk be given to children if the mother is covid positive so yes definitely breast milk can be given to children if the mother is covid positive because the mother in fact through the breast milk gives the antibody to the children that's one next who claims that the benefits due to breast milk is much more than the risks of covid so this is very important but when you give breast milk maybe we can wear a proper mask and you know proper hand washing techniques all that could be done so next is when children develop the symptoms or if children are covid positive only problem is the caretakers are to be really careful that they don't get the disease because usually the children are with the elders we we'll have to take care that the elders don't get the disease so that alone we'll have to be a little careful but otherwise children usually it's mild to moderate so in this video we have now looked about herd immunity vaccination children and breastfeeding i hope this video was very useful for all of you 
we will be continuing to put more health related videos in our page this is mainly to get public aware about different diseases because our goal is that if the public is aware of the disease most of its complications can be avoided thank you